Up next on our program is the one and only Dr. Mark Peterson, who is Professor in Community Economic Development here at University of Arkansas Cooperative Extension Service. He is known for his effectiveness in teaching leadership principles and skills to community leaders, which lead to effective community action. He has taught workshops in Canada, Peru, Italy, in Germany, and the Ukraine. His passion is to equip community leaders to think and act strategically in times of rapid change. He is the coordinator of the Breakthrough Solutions Program, an internationally recognized partnership initiative committed to building vibrant, sustainable communities and regions for the 21st century. Breakthrough Solutions has 18 partner organizations, has worked with over 40 communities, which involved over 9,000 citizens, and initiated projects with a value exceeding 76 million. The pilot community for the new Breakthrough Solutions program is Harrison, which had attracted over 40 new businesses net into its downtown area, plus many other accomplishments. And i just like to thank him for introducing the concept of Breakthrough Solutions, for giving me the opportunity to participate for I don't know how many years now in one form or another, and thank you for becoming a true Arkansan, even though you did not grow up here, but thank you for bringing your energy and excitement and commitment to helping us become the communities that we are want to see happen in our, our community. So without further ado, Dr. Mark Peterson, and what would a full-blown 21st century community look like, and how do we get there? Any elected officials here, either people who are, are elected officials or have been in the past, if you'd stand up. There's a mayor of Mulberry, come on, let's give him a hand, good, great. We appreciate your being here. Winston Churchill said, politics is almost as exciting as war and quite as dangerous. In war, you can only be killed once, been in politics many times. Is that true? That's true, okay. The most important person in the room that's going to go back and really make things happen is sitting right next to you. So reach over and shake their hand and say, we want to see things happen, Timothy. <laughs> that's right. Hey, Marty, we want to see things happen. OK. I want to give uh, a special thanks to our Breakthrough Solutions sponsors. Uh, State Chamber of Commerce, Shelly Short, are you here? Stand up, Shelly. She's out back. And Randy Zook is going to be here. AT&T Arkansas, Melinda, would you stand, stand up? Come on. Uh, Intergy, just stand up and keep up. Intergy, Tandy White is here. Uh, Newport, they didn't, weren't able to make it. Arkansas Community Development Society. Um, Whitney Horton and Terry McClendon, any other board members? And Drew Pack, okay. Electric Co-ops of Arkansas, J.D. Lowry, is J.D. here? He'll be here this afternoon. UCA Center for Community and Economic Development, there's Amy, come on, Amy and Shelby. Okay, terrific. Um, we really appreciate your support. You make it possible for us to do this, so we really appreciate that. Here's our partners. They're just a lot of fun. These are the coolest people to work with. If you want to get some real, get your juices flowing, you start to work with other people, and you, do, you can do things together you could never do by yourself, so we really appreciate that. Um, Heather Larkin is going to be, is Heather here? She's going to be here this afternoon with Arkansas Community Foundation. Clavon Young, or is Clavon here with Arkansas? Stand up, come on, come on. Arkansas Human Development Corporation. Uh, Phil Plyler with Arkansas Manufacturing Solutions, AEDC. He's great. Arkansas Small Business Technology and Development Center, Timothy Lee. Timothy. Timothy's. He's done an incredible job with Ignite, which you'll see in a few minutes. Arkansas State Chamber, Shelley. Stand up, there she is. AT&T, Arkansas, Melinda. Uh, Jerry couldn't make it. Ed Levy with Cromwell. You see, Ed donates his time with, with these 
charrettes, and so it's just incredible. Before, we talked about vision, and it was sort of intellectual, and then Ed comes along and he makes it come alive, and Ken Hubble does the same thing. Uh, let's see, Commonwealth Electric Co-ops, JD is not here, Entergy, uh, Tandy, Tandy, wave your hand. Federal Reserve, Drew Pack, great. Uh, Ken Hubble, Ken Hubble and Associates. <laughs> Ken Hubble is the best facilitator in the state. I mean, he, he just, he does magic. And that work, you saw that work of art out here, he did that. That was like a year or two ago, one of our keynoters. And I saw yesterday, Ken, there were several people and they were just looking at it. It would just, they were drawn to it. So you have a real gift. We really appreciate your sharing that with us. Uh, Newport, uh, Simmons Bank, Marty North. Hey, Marty. Um, we have some folks from Extension. Let's see, is Wayne Miller here? Stacy McCullough, Stacy, they'll be here. Um, okay, so reimagining, reinventing the Breakthrough Solutions Conference. We decided we need to reinvent this conference. And we reinvent what we do just every now and then. We just say we, gotta, we have to reinvent it. So this is, these dates are perfect. That's why there's so many other things going on in the state, these same dates in the same week. So we just say, well, we'll just reinvent what we're doing. And so one is to have the art show. So Kim McGee, would you come down? Kim is a director of our art show and is also an artist. And she and her husband own an art framing shop. So let's give a hand for Kim. Okay, have you all, hopefully you all have already noticed the art that's lining the walls as you come down. One side is the youth division and the other side is the adult division. How many people have already voted on your favorites? Not very many. Well, the good news is you can still vote up until 1 p.m. today. It's quick. It's fairly painless. All you have to do is pick up a sheet of paper. On the, it's next to the registration table. But there's a color that denotes the youth and a color that denotes the adult. And you just pick your favorites and drop it in the bucket. And then at the end of the day, there will be first through third places for both divisions with awesome prizes. And they really are. There's gift certificates to bed and breakfast, Fitbits, things like that are the prizes for that. So you want to make sure you get your votes in for that. And we want to thank everyone that either collected art for us. I know the Manila... Is the person from Manila that got the youth stuff here? No. No. Okay. Well, we thank her for collecting that. And then the youth, I mean, the adults that created some art for us, we appreciate that as well. So we hope you enjoy looking at the art and please vote. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> Video conferencing. You know, we talk about the information age. So this afternoon in the broadband session, uh, Wayne Miller is involved in piping in Dr. Andrew Cohill. He's the director of the, the first broadband community in the country, which was Blacksburg, uh, Virginia. It's called the Blacksburg Electronic Village. Andrew actually spoke at one of our conferences many years ago, but we're going to pipe him in, and so you'll be able to see him. Uh, Joel Gordon, is Joel here? He's, he's a new director of the Regional Innovation Hub in North Little Rock, and he brought a 3D printer, and he's going to, when he gets back, he's going to run it, and you'll, see, you'll be able to see 3D printing. He has a couple things out there. Is that cool? He was going to print a house, but where would you put it? <laughs> uh, so we're moving from a conference just being a place where you come and learn things that you go back to a place where you generate and collect information and insights and, and solutions and strategies, and then you share that with a much wider audience. And so that's what we're going to be doing over the next uh, today and, and yesterday. And we share that with Facebook. We have a blog. Our Breakthrough News goes to over 2,000 people. It's an e email newsletter. Sign up if you haven't signed up, and in presentations. Um, so in your, in, for you or MCs, have somebody take notes in your session so you, so you can share with us your top five or ten key insights that we can share with a much wider audience. Okay, yesterday was incredible. We heard about three, 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 
industry, reimagining or reinventing communities. Dardanelle is reinventing their downtown. They have tremendous uh, architectural buildings and the downtown and so forth. So Ed Levy has been working with them where they can reimagine Front Street. Uh, Eureka Springs, um, you're going to hear more about them, but Diane and Jack have done a great job repurposing an entire high school campus that was vacant. They had a great visit with uh, Zachary. And Fayetteville is now positioning itself as a startup capital of the South. So there's a whole lot of dimensions of what that would look like and how they can do that. Uh, we're now in an experience economy where people have shifted from passive consumption to active participation. And so instead of just having things where people can see them, like maybe a museum, there's more interest in um, activities in your community. So think in your community briefly, We'll just have a show of hand. In your own community, how many of you have zero to five things in your community to do? How about six to 10, 11 to 15, 16 to 20, over 20? So the question is, does the whole world know about those things in your community? Because that's the big question these days. Um, earlier this year, I went to visit a community in Arkansas, over 9,000 population, college town, it's an honor st interstate, high traffic, uh, passing through 27,000. And I asked, had some community folks there and asked them this question, how many things do you have going on? And here's what they said. Most of them said 16 to 20. One young man said there's over 50 things to do in our community. So I went to TripAdvisor. What do you think TripAdvisor said? There are three things to do in the community. Isn't that interesting? The other side of the story is that there are also over 20 vacant buildings and a bunch of concrete slabs uh, where there used to be buildings in this community. So the question is, if just 3% of that 27,000 vehicles a day, 810 vehicles a day, saw there were more things to do in the community as they drove through it, do you think they would have over 20 vacant buildings? You see the power, power of of letting the world know about what you're doing and the impact on local jobs and businesses and the spirit of core in the community. Uh, here's a question about the internet. And there's now 91% of our population now use the internet, which is about um, 290 million people. To build a, a, a billboard on an interstate would be very expensive, but to build a billboard on the internet is free. Uh, TripAdvisor is free. You can put things up there to do, antique shops, other kinds of activities. You can have a dialogue with people who live all over the world about your community. If you're not on the internet in the 21st century, you don't exist. And that could be in, in multiple venues. Welcome to the 21st century economy. A horse named Cloud Computing won the Preakness, ta Preakness Stakes. And we, we have a president who tweets. Airbnb is now the biggest hotel company in the world, and they don't own any properties. Uber is a software tool that doesn't own any cars, but is now the biggest taxi company in the world. Do you see disruptive change? I mean, the, you see the breakthroughs? So they're, with all these things, there are winners and losers, right? Uber's goal is to replace those uh, with robot drivers or driverless cars as soon as possible. China's building a robot army of model workers. Recent Oxford University study, a high percentage of our jobs are at risk of automation within the next 20 years. Adidas is printing sneakers with 3D printers. So the ultimate goal is you, um, Zach was telling, you know, if you have questions about technology, you ask a young, ask a young person. So. I was asking about the shoes. He said, well, they have this device. You put your foot in, and it measures your, your foot. And then you send it to Adidas. And they will craft a perfect, actually, they, they will create um, a blueprint of a perfect shoe for your foot. And they send it to you, pay for it. And you send it, and then you can print it. You can print a perfect shoe for your foot. Or the local store could do that. Isn't that interesting? No inventory, no, 
no factories. So the implications of this are just amazing. My neighbor shops in his pajamas. How many of us, how many people here have Amazon Prime? Hold up your hand. Is that amazing? So over half of the people in the country, over half the households in the country have Amazon Prime. So you can order all this stuff, right? Two days, no shipping. It's coming. They're working on And so, you know, I was curious. My, my neighbor has two recycling bins. Mom, dad, two kids. I, why, would, why would they have two recycling bins? Well, it's because they're always buying stuff that comes in trucks, and they get all these cardboard boxes. So they need two recycling bins. And so he, I figured out he shops on his pajamas. But think of the implications of that, right? He doesn't shop locally, he shops through Amazon. They bypass the local store. So we need to, we need to figure out what are, what are the wins for the local community in this kind of environment. And you think, well, it's good for FedEx and UPS. Well, now they're working on drones to deliver this. And so, and, and then you could have driverless trucks. So things are changing so fast. It's, the challenge is to see the opportunities in all these changes. How many of you think, a, slow, a show of hands, how many of you think the pace of change is slowing down? About the same, picking up speed, like a hurricane. Okay, good. How many are comfortable with that? Okay, good for you, Walter. Walter Nunn is comfortable. He's on the cutting edge. The rules for success have changed. 21st century global economy is global, it's digital, and it's fast. We met with some folks in Mountain Home recently, great folks, and you see what worked really well five or ten years ago is not working as well today. They have these incredible music and festivals, but the numbers of people who come to the festivals is in decline. And this is what one person said, we need to reinvent our community without losing our soul. Isn't that incredible quote? You just so that's your job and that's my job is how can we see what are the opportunities for our communities without losing our soul? Here are things that are happening. The governor creates an office of transform transformation. Walmart says we need a new Walmart. Digital transformation is key. Saudi Arabia wants to build a two trillion dollar mega fund to change its economy. So we see these things, but we see these things are happening at the geopolitical, national, and public, private, non nonprofit sector. So the key is what are the key drivers of change and how can we take advantage of those? I'm going to share with you some, I'm just going to go through some of these, and each of these have opportunities for a community. I think the communities that are successful, they're like a surfer who learns how to ride the wave, right? Some folks, they paddle out. And they, and they miss a wave, it just goes on behind them. Some communities paddle out and they're looking the other way and they get clobbered. And so the key is how can we take advantage, how can we, let, how can we learn to ride the wave in our communities? You don't have to ride all of them, it could be just one. It might be local foods or, or some other uh, real opportunity. So demography, having a handle on this, Zach has a good sense of that, right? Of what the, the millennials and what do they need, what, what are they looking for, and if, if we don't know what, they, what they're looking for, how can we create a community that would attract them? Boomers, traditionals. Technology, faster, mobile, social media is critical, broadband, Wi-Fi, global marketplace, so some people have an, went to an Etsy festival recently. How many people are familiar with Etsy? Right, so you can, you can market things online, right? You can live in any place. You can market things online. So that's, the, that's the, an offering for the global marketplace. Working in a region has real merit. You get a critical mass. So in the Arco region, heart of the Washita's, people are more likely to go there when they see, wow, in those three counties, there's all these things that we can do. And we can go there and we'll stay a couple days rather than just kind of passing through. Localization is big. Local foods, local music, local history, drama, and so forth. Because it's unique. And part of that is authenticity. 
more and more people are seeking authentic experiences. Quality of place is critical, sustainability, green and long-term sustainability. So here's a model, we touched on this yesterday. We'll just have a little, I was gonna break into small groups, but we don't have time. I'd rather have talked to Zach, hear Zachary talk, because he's, he's so brilliant and talking about the changes taking place. So in a 21st century community, if you had a community that said, you know, we want to be the model for the 21st century community in a global economy that's digital, it's fast, and it's transformational, what would we see in the economic base? It just, if we visited a community like that, what would we see? What are things, uh, what, would, what would you see? You see a microbrew yeah. or more than one? Yeah. Okay. I know that's crazy, but every community here needs to think about how to do a brewery. Good. Okay. What else? Good. Yeah, Brown. Good. Okay. So we're into physical infrastructure, but fast internet, fiber, right? Fiber to the home would be best with mobile broadband. Okay. What else? Yes. You have to have experiences. All about the experience. So that's why on TripAdvisor, I didn't say how many restaurants you have, but how many things you have to do. Good. Sustainable. Okay. What do you mean? You know, something where you're not destroying the, the resources or the assets that you're building. Your Good. Business. Good. And, and we're drawn to communities that are sustainable, right? We, we would see that on their website. We would see that in a lot of different ways, right? In their transportation, bike, trails, whatever. What else? A vibrant downtown. Vibrant downtown, absolutely. That's, that's what's unique, right? Unique, authentic, different things to do, different kind. Many communities have the strip, right? The box stores. Uh, somebody else? Yes, Terry. Okay, so different people feel comfortable there. There's a niche for them, right? All the, the shops are kind of funky and interesting and different opportunities to participate in the community if, regardless of your age and so forth. Good. Other, what else would you see? Good, good. What else? What else would we see if we went to a community like this? Good, good. Jack Moyer. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Good, good. It's, Steve, did you have one more? More what? Okay. 
Good. Good, good, sounds good. Um, I, Timothy's been taking notes, so this has been kind of a, a brain trust. I'm, I want to share with you, I know text is not best, I just want to share with you some <laughs> thoughts about this. We, we're going to make all these available to you. Um, uh, first, a few things about how to reimagine your community. So start with communication. So we're going to learn this in the Ignite session about in Conway County, how they bring the leaders together to communicate. Community surveys and visioning. So you start talking about the future. The Breakthrough Solutions Art Show is an example. You could do that in your local high school or in the community. And you're having people think about the future. And it's, it starts that conversation. Fairfield Bay has a Vision 2030 committee. And they elicit ideas about what they want the community to look like in 2030. In Alma, they have a vision committee. And they elicit ideas from people about what they'd like to see. And so you see when you change the conversation, ultimately it ends up in changing the community and the physical infrastructure. You create vision and act, vision and action creates just buzz, which attracts investment and business. And we've seen that over and over. In Harrison, it's led to over 40 new businesses come into the core district net. So people are watching you. You may think, oh, there's only five or 10 of us working on this downtown revitalization, but other people who may live in Dallas or in Chicago are watching what you're doing. They may have been from your community, and they've always wanted to come back and start a business, but nothing was happening. We've seen that over and over. And the Breakthrough Solutions model is how do you leverage our assets to create the vision uh, that we want of the future. So it requires a new, a new way of looking at things, of assets, opportunities. Let's harness the forces of change. Our vacant buildings are really assets, diamonds in the rough, and we are pioneers looking for breakthroughs. And Zachary, and yesterday we saw a lot of breakthroughs also. Here's a breakthrough creating an experience, right? So Harry County is known for goats. And they had this goat festival, you'll hear more. Sarah's gonna talk, give us a real scoop on it. Over 2,000 people showed up at the goat festival. How many have seen a goat wearing a moo? <laughs> okay, good, good. Well, you'll, see, you'll probably see a picture of one. Here's the 20th century infrastructure. Uh, water, roads, streets, dial up, and so forth. So I wanna, sh and there's the infrastructure for communications. <coughs> So I want to share with you some 20, 21st century uh, Wi-Fi downtown, high-speed broadband, robust use of social media, hot spots, microbreweries, gathering places, entrepreneurial environment, multiple networks, ways for people to be involved, incubators, maker spaces, cultures embraced, complete streets. Local foods is a big deal throughout the community. K through 12, this is on STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. Lifelong opportunities, branding, and so forth. IWED has a great places program, and here what they've decided, or what they've <laughs> discovered, are the great places in their community. Uh, we have a newsletter that you can sign up for, and we have a publication which has over 50 strategies for fundraising, for r raising funding, so, for your community. I think a real key is what is uh, having a passion and a sense of purpose. And I want to share with you a story, and then show, um, I want to show a video first. Great. There were, and this has to do with why are we doing things, right? why are we working in our community. So there were three stonemasons. This is in the middle, in the dark ages, and they're working away and one person comes and asks the first one, what are you doing? He says, oh, I'm cutting this stone. And he asks the next person, what are you doing? And he says, I'm making this parapet. And he asks the third person, what are you doing? And he said, I'm building a cathedral that will glorify God for centuries to come. So what you're, the things you're doing are not just for your current generation, they're for your children and your grandchildren and perhaps for a transcendent purpose. How do I know? A lot of people, when they think of the phrase, how do I know, they always want to put the what behind it. How do I know what I'm supposed to do? The, the question that you really should ask is, how do I know why I'm here? Because when you know your why, your what becomes more clear and more impactful. If you know, like for instance, um, people know that I do comedy, but that's what I do. 
my why is to inspire people to walk in purpose. So I can do comedy, I can write books, I can be in a movie, because all of it is motivated by my why. In fact, I have a new, uh, a new web series out called Michael Jr. Break Time. Uh, we probably just did the sixth episode. It's on YouTube. So every single Wednesday at three o'clock, we drop a new episode on YouTube of Michael Jr. Break Time. What it is, is it's me. I travel around the country and I do stand-up comedy, in case you didn't know. <laughs> and in the middle of my comedy set sometime, I'll stop and just talk to my audience. And we've been filming this and it's you know, it's, it's pretty cool. So we're in Winston-Salem. I'm gonna show you a clip from Winston-Salem. And I'm just talking to this guy in the audience and he tells me that he's a, uh, a musical instructor at a school. So I was like, all right, you're a musical instructor. You know, can you sing? Let me hear you sing a song. So this is what happened at the last episode of Michael Jr.'s Break Time. Check it. So you're a musical director. Cool. Yes, sir. All right, so um, let, me get a couple, let me get a couple bars of like uh, Amazing Grace. Can you do the first part of that? Let me, go ahead. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Wow. That brought could sing. You know what I'm saying? All right, all right. Uh, now, once you give me the version, is if. Uh, your uncle just got out of jail. You got shot in the back when you was a kid. I'm just saying, let me see the hood version real quick. If you know which version I'm talking about, just see if that exists. Let me see what you got. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that Saved a wretch like me. Oh, was, was lost. But now, right now, I'm found. Was blind. But Okay, um, here's what I want you to catch. The first time I asked him to sing, he knew what he was doing. The second time, he knew why he was doing it. When you know your why, your what becomes more impactful because you're walking towards or in your purpose. If you say we're gonna fix up the downtown, you know, they say, okay, you know, go, go do it, man. But if you say, we're, we want to create a downtown so our young people can come back and they can stay here and they can have opportunities. And we, we need you to be a part of this because you have talents and abilities. You see how powerful that is. Sometimes you have to ask three times, why are you doing this? And they'll say, give you an answer, why are you doing it? You ask them three times. So anyhow, start with why. It's been great having you here, you're smart folks. We're looking forward to exciting things happen. And let us know how we can help you. <laughs>